Welcome back. Today's story is the story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf, drawings by Robert Lawson. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in the shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here, where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. This is our friend Ferdinand, grown up. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. Madrid is a city in Spain. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pit the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. I like their hats. Which one is your favorite? All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting and leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were the very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care. So we went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting, and instead of sitting on a nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. What do you think happened? You might be right. Let's see. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that is just what the bee did to Ferdinand. Wow! Did it hurt? Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting and butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him, and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fierce bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. Poor Ferdinand, he doesn't want to go. Let's see what happens. So they took him away 
for the bullfight in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderilleros with long, sharp pins with the ribbons on them to make the bulls mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had spears to make the bull even madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a crepe cape and a sword and was supposed to be the last one. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the bandoleros were afraid of him, and the picadores were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring, and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the bandoleros were mad and the picadores were madder and the matador was so mad that he cried because he couldn't show off his cape and his sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he's sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly, and he is very happy. The end. What did you think of that book? I like that book because sometimes we think that people are strange if they don't like to do what we like to do. But that's not true. We're all different. We like to do different things. Now I'm going to read a book about bees because a bee stung Ferdinand and I thought it might be fun to learn a little bit about bees. This book is called Bees by Melvin and Gilda Berger. Bees buzz around. Bees fly from flower to flower. They look for food. Bees find food in flowers. Bees pick up pollen. Bees eat pollen, which is the yellow powder on flowers. They carry the pollen away. They carry it on their feet over here. They gather it. Bees are amazing. Bees sip nectar from the flowers. Nectar is a sweet juice hidden inside flowers. They fly home with the pollen and nectar. If you look really close, there's the pollen sticking on the bee. Bees live in a hive. As many as 60,000 bees can live together in a hive. They put the pollen and nectar inside. Yeah. 
Each little pod is a hexagon. A hexagon is a shape with six sides. Bees make the nectar into honey. They eat some pollen and some honey. Bees share their food with other bees in the hive. Bees are good sharers. People also build hives. People build hives in wooden boxes. They take the honey out. They don't take all the honey. They take part of it and they leave part for the bees. These are really good chairs. Honey is yummy. Do you like honey? Honey is yummy. So I was thinking today that you could maybe make some paper flowers or paper bees, or maybe you could go outside and you could look for the pollinators that are out for spring already. Bees and wasps and butterflies and even things like um, hummingbirds, things like that. You could look for the flowers that the pollinators are using already, but remember, don't pick them. We leave the flowers for the pollinators because they need them more than we do. You could find Spain on a map. You could find Madrid. You could see where our story took place. You could count to 10 in Spanish. Those are fun things to do. Well, until the next time I see you, bye-bye.